This video is how to make authentic Cuban coffee. I'm going to show you how to make Cuban coffee today. I've seen a lot of videos on the internet on how to do this and um, I've, I've actually worked and lived with uh, the Cubans down in Florida for uh, uh, for about a year or so and uh, they insisted that I learn how to make Cuban coffee and since then I've been doing it a lot and I've seen some videos and uh, I've seen some things that really could be improved. That's really why I'm making this video. Uh, you know, I'll say this is authentic Cuban coffee, uh, but um, there are some differences in, in how I'm doing this. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is show you the typical um, uh, hardware that they use, you know, espresso pots that they use for cooking Cuban coffee. And you can buy them at uh, any of your specialty stores. They're not very expensive either. Uh, but the first thing that you want to do when you make Cuban coffee is you put some water in the base of your espresso maker. And it, it should go right below this pressure valve. You don't want to fill the water over the top of that. So I'm going to do that right now real quick. Because I'm actually going to be making some Cuban coffee here. And I thought I would just make some Cuban coffee while um, now, you probably can't see this, but the water inside this pot is right here. It's just right below it. Not up to it or over it, but right below it. Now, when you make Cuban coffee, you have um, this strainer here. And it goes on top. Now, there are different brands that you can use. Uh, there's Bustelo. Uh, and you'll notice that there's the, the Premium, which has the black labels. And then the Standard, which comes in yellow. And uh, a lot of the Cubans I work with actually prefer Pilon uh, Select. Uh, they're both pretty close, really. Uh, I've made quite a bit of, of Cuban coffee here. So the first thing you do is you fill up your container with your espresso. Now, some of the regulations will tell you don't compress it, but you do, and I've got a, uh, I've got a little, I don't know what you call it, weight that is used to actually compress that. You know, when you make Cuban coffee, really what you're doing is, you know, this, this Cuban coffee has um, oil in the beans, and, and you're, you're cooking that out, and and so if you compress it, you get a little bit more intensity in the flavor. And don't worry about making a mess. Uh, the Cubans uh, down in Florida that I used to work with, uh, they would tell me you, you're making a mess is part of making Cuban coffee. Um, there's a strainer in the bottom here, and it's empty on top. After you've got your water and you've got your uh, espresso in there, then you simply screw that lid back on there and you want to make sure that it's nice and tight and from here I'm going to actually cook that uh, on the stove until it starts bubbling up and you can lift that lid <clears throat> one of the one of the secrets to making really really good Cuban coffee is actually in uh, some of the ingredients uh, the Cubans don't use cinnamon, but what I like to do is uh, I just basically tap a little bit of the container on top of my stirring cup. And this is the tricky part. You have to use a pinch, and I mean just a pinch. If you use any more than a pinch, then you're going to be tasting cinnamon and you'll ruin it. You know that you've got enough cinnamon in there when you take a drink of your Cuban, Cuban coffee and you don't really taste it but then the aftertaste comes and then you can taste the cinnamon and you did it right. Now this is my little trick. They don't really do that with the standard Cuban coffee. Uh, I started doing it and I like it. Now here is probably one of the biggest secrets and nobody says anything about this on the internet. Uh, I, I don't care how many videos you watch. They'll tell you to put sugar in your cup 
you know, and then you just kind of drizzle it in little bit by little bit while you stir it. Well, you know, you can use sugar, and most folks do. I actually grab a shot glass as a measurement, you know, usually about two uh, teaspoons will do it, but I like to use a shot glass. But here's the deal. If you make it with pure white bleached sugar, um, your coffee is traditional. I started using uh, light brown sugar and found out that the taste was better. But when I moved to organic evaporated cane sugar, it was a whole other ball game. So instead of using the regular sugars that other folks use, maybe you talk to other baristas, um, I will use actually the, the cane sugar. Si puedo conseguir alguna cane sugar, entonces estoy bien. If I can get some cane sugar, cane sugar, I'm in good shape. So um, at this point, the rest of the um, process is pretty much the, sh the same. And um, let me show you real quick. Keep that in there. Oh, I get some cane sugar here, and I'm going to actually again. I'm going to do just enough to just barely. I mean, you can't hardly tell it, but there's just just a. I'm going to have to do probably a top shot on this, you know, but. It's just barely enough so that you can even see it in there. It's not much. It's a equivalent to about a pinch, you know. Again, I just want to, to affect the aftertaste. So that's basically it. At, at this point, um, I'm going to put this on the stove and let it cook. And then um, when I'm done, I'm going to come back here and then I'm going to start mixing this in. You know, there's also probably one other process that I want to share with you folks. When you make Cuban coffee, and, and I heard some of the girls complain about how their arms hurt and stuff like that. A lot, the Cubans that I work with were very fastidious. They're very meticulous, very clean, and very particular. They said, Dallas, don't ever buy a, a, a stirring can unless it's round on the bottom. They want it exactly the right way. Well, there's another twist about stirring this, this Cuban coffee. If you stir in a circular motion, that product just goes around and around. But you, if you go from side to side, then you're actually colliding with that sugar better. And so when I make the Cuban coffee, one of the tricks I use is I go from side to side. Like that. So I'm going to stop here and uh, put this on the stove and then I'll, we'll, uh, we'll come back in just a minute. You can see that the coffee is starting to percolate. The espresso is starting to fill up at the bottom. At this point you can start pouring some in uh, to your tin that has the sugar in it. I wanted to show you what it looks like. And you can also, you know, wait till it gets a little bit fuller as well. Okay, I've got my uh, cup of uh, sugar. And you can take a look at that and see that we've got that in there. And I'm going to start pouring just a little bit in here. You might want to get, you know, right on top of this so they can see that just a little bit. I put just a little bit in there. And then I'm going to start stirring it up. Initially, I'll use some circular motions. And I'm going to add just a little bit more. Also, if you're making this and you, and you realize that you put too much espresso in there, if you continue to stir it and, and whip it, um, Sometimes you can pull it out and you know, make the consistency that you want. Um, when you're making this espumino, I'm not saying that right. When you're make, making this uh, cream that goes on top of the coffee, 
you want to make sure that it's the consistency of kind of like cake icing, you know, kind of like, you know, thin cake icing. You know, remember how I meant you to go side to, side by side. Take a look at, at what we've got here. Can you see that? That's about what you want. I like to whip it. Get that cream really good. It, the more that you whip it, the wider it will become. And that's the good stuff. And it's best to, to move in just a little bit more of your espresso. Notice I'm going from side to side, not just stirring it. I find it's a lot easier to get that consistent consistency in it. You know, you uh, you know, perk up your day a little bit. Our friends down south would say. If you type 20 words a minute and you take Cuban coffee, you type 80 words a minute. <laughs> so I'm going to continue to beat that for just a little bit more and then I'm going to pour uh, the espresso into it. Take the time and, and work on this. This is really uh, a hallmark of you know, Cuban coffee, having that cream on top. If you don't have that cream on top, then you didn't do it right. Okay, so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to continue to beat that a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and pour this in here. black gold. And I'm going to pour some in. Now, take a look at uh, at uh, the, the the way that coffee looks. See how it's got this really nice cream on top. Es, espo, espunito. Es, I'm ruining it now. <laughs> um, but that's really what it, it, it looks like. Um, <laughs> Necesito ayuda con mi palabra, so <laughs> perdóname, forgive me for my Spanish, eh? I'm still learning. Uh, but I'm going to try some of this, and um, let's see how I did it. That's good. That is some really, really good espresso. Mmm. Notice how I've been drinking out of this, and it's still there. Now, if you were to use something like uh, white sugar, or even light brown sugar, you take a few sips, and uh, your cream's going to be gone. And this is the secret that I'm letting out here, uh, Dallas's secret to making the best Cuban uh, coffee, and that is to use the evaporated organic uh, cane sugar. Uh, 
Um, that's used also a lot in fermentation processes and it just, it doesn't clump uh, as bad, I found, as the other types of sugar. And it whips a little bit easier and it's very, very smooth and thick. And what I taste is, it's only slightly bitter. And it's, it's at that point that I want with just enough cinnamon so that the aftertaste has a hint of cinnamon. Um, that is all I have for today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching my video and uh, I hope you all will uh, make some Cuban coffee and enjoy your day. Thanks.